ASTM C173 is the standard test method for air content of freshly mixed concrete by the volumetric method. This test method covers the determination of the air content of freshly mixed concrete containing any type of aggregate, whether it be dense, cellular, or lightweight. This test measures the air contained in the mortar fraction of the concrete, but is not affected by air that may be present inside porous aggregate particles. This presentation does not suggest to address the safety concerns associated with this procedure. It is the responsibility of the viewer of this presentation to follow all safety procedures, rules, and standards established by private companies, government agencies, and construction site supervisors. This presentation uses both inch-pound units as well as SI units. These units shall be regarded as separate. In other words, the value of one unit shall not be considered the exact equivalent of the other. Therefore, the units shall not be considered interchangeable. Any conflating of the two systems may result in noncompliance of this standard. ASTM C173 is the appropriate test to determine the air content of concretes containing lightweight aggregates, air-cooled slag, and highly porous or vesicular natural aggregates. To perform this test, we'll need the following equipment. The roller meter itself. The measuring bowl of the roller meter shall not have a capacity of less than 0.075 cubic feet, or 2.0 liters. The measuring bowl shall have a diameter equal to 1 to 1.25 times the height, and be constructed with a flange at or near the top surface. The top section shall have a capacity of at least 20% larger than the measuring bowl. The top section shall be equipped with a transparent scale graduated in increments not greater than 0.5%, from zero at the top to 9% or more of the volume of the measuring bowl. Graduations shall be accurate to 0.1% by volume of the measuring bowl. The upper end of the neck shall have a watertight cap that will maintain a watertight seal when the meter is inverted and rolled. Furthermore, the roller meter shall be equipped with a flexible gasket and a device to attach the top section to the measuring bowl. We'll also need a calibrated cup, a metal or plastic cup either having a capacity of or being graduated in increments equal to 1.00 plus or minus 0.04 percent of the volume of the measuring bowl of the air meter. The calibrated cup is only to be used to add water when the concrete air content exceeds 9 percent or the calibrated range of the meter. A round, smooth, straight steel, or high-density polyethylene, or other plastic rod of equal or greater abrasion resistance with a 5-8 inch plus or minus 1 16th of an inch, or 16 millimeter plus or minus 2 millimeter diameter. The length of the tamping rod shall be at least 4 inches, or 100 millimeters greater than the depth of the measuring bowl in which rotting is being performed, but not greater than 24 inches or 600 millimeters in overall length. The rod shall have the tamping end or both ends rounded to a hemispherical tip of the same diameter. We're going to need a mallet with a rubber or rawhide head with a mass of approximately 1.25 pounds plus or minus 0.5 pounds or 600 grams plus or minus 200 grams. A flat straight steel bar at least 1 8 of an inch thick 3 quarters of an inch wide and 12 inches long. That is 3 millimeters thick, 20 millimeters wide, and 300 millimeters long. Or a flat, straight, high-density polyethylene bar or other suitable plastic at least 1 quarter inch thick, 3 quarters of an inch wide, and 12 inches long. Or 6 millimeters thick by 20 millimeters wide and 300 millimeters long. Some other accessories that we're going to need include a funnel. The funnel will have a spout of a size permitting it to be inserted through the neck of the top section and long enough to extend to a point just above the bottom of the top section. The discharge end of the spout shall be so constructed that when water is added to the container, there will be a minimum disturbance of the concrete. 70% by volume isopropyl alcohol. Other foam dispensing agents are permitted if tests demonstrate that the use of the agent does not change the indicated air content in the amounts being used by more than 0.1%. For the isopropyl alcohol, 
we will need a measuring device with a minimum capacity of at least one pint, or 500 milliliters, with graduations not larger than four ounces, or 100 milliliters, for measuring a quantity of isopropyl alcohol. We're going to need a syringe. The syringe should have a capacity of at least two ounces, or 50 milliliters. A pouring device will also be necessary with a capacity of at least one quart, or one liter. A field favorite is the 6x12 plastic cylinder mold. And of course, we'll need a scoop. If the concrete contains coarse aggregate particles that would be retained on a 1.5 inch or 37.5 millimeter sieve, wet sieve a representative sample over 1 inch or 25 millimeter sieve to yield somewhat more than enough material to fill the measuring bowl. The wet sieving procedure is described in practice C172. The concrete used to fill the measuring bowl shall not have been previously used in the performance of any other test or practice other than wet sieving or the temperature. Now that we understand the basics of ASTM C173, let's go through a detailed performance review. We must obtain our sample in accordance with ASTM C172, standard practice for sampling freshly mixed concrete. If the concrete contains aggregate that will be retained on the one and a half inch or 37.5 millimeter sieve, the sample must be wet sieved over a 1 inch or 25 millimeter sieve. Dampen the interior of the measuring bowl and remove any standing water from the bottom. Fill the measuring bowl to approximately half its volume. Move the scoop around the perimeter of the measuring bowl opening to ensure an even distribution of the concrete. Rod the first layer 25 times uniformly over the cross section with the rounded end of the rod. Rod this layer throughout its depth, taking care not to forcibly strike the bottom of the bowl. Tap the sides of the measuring bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet to close any voids left by the tamping rod and to release any large bubbles of air that may have been trapped. We can now add the second layer of concrete, again moving the scoop around the outer edge of the bowl to ensure even distribution and reduce segregation. Rod the second layer 25 times. Here, we want to penetrate the previous layer by about 1 inch, or 25 millimeters. Once again, tap the sides of the bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet. After tapping the second layer, but before striking off, a small quantity of representative concrete can be added or removed to compensate for slight deficiencies or excesses. 1 eighth of an inch, or 3 millimeters, above the rim of the bowl is optimum. After rotting and tapping of the second layer, Strike off the excess concrete with the strike-off bar until the surface is flush with the top of the measuring bowl. Wipe the flange of the measuring bowl clean. We now want to wet the inside of the top section of the meter. This is a step many people forget in the performance review. Also, be sure to include the gasket. Attach the top section to the measuring bowl and insert the funnel. We'll now add at least one pint, or 0.5 liters, of water followed by the selected amount of isopropyl alcohol. Again, the pint of water is introduced first, and then the selected amount of alcohol. Be sure to record the amount of isopropyl alcohol used. To obtain a stable reading and minimize the foam, a certain amount of alcohol must be added to the roller meter. The amount of alcohol will depend upon many factors, including cement content, air content, admixtures, and supplemental cementitious materials, just to name a few. This table shows the correction necessary for the effect of isopropyl alcohol on the air meter reading. As you can see, if less than two pints, or one liter, is used, there is no adjustment in the reading. However, at three pints, or two liters, 0.25% should be subtracted from the air meter reading. And as the amount of alcohol use increases, its effect on the air meter reading also increases. When, if ever, it is necessary to use more than 4.5 pints, or 2.0 liters of isopropyl alcohol, it may be necessary to restrict the amount of water added initially to avoid overfilling the meter. However, it is desirable to add at least some water initially to aid in mixing the alcohol, and limit the contact of the concentrated alcohol with the top surface of the concrete. Continue adding water, at least until it appears in the graduated neck of the top section, and remove the funnel. 
Now, adjust the liquid level until the bottom of the meniscus is level with the zero mark on the graduated neck. A rubber syringe is useful for this purpose. Attach and tighten the watertight cap. Free the concrete from the measuring bowl. Quickly invert the meter, shake the measuring bowl horizontally, and return the meter to the upright position. To prevent the aggregate from lodging in the neck of the unit, do not keep it inverted for more than five seconds at a time. Repeat the inversion and shaking process for a minimum of 45 seconds and until the concrete is broken free and the aggregate can be heard moving in the meter as it is inverted. Place one hand on the neck of the meter and the other on the flange. Using the hand on the neck, tilt the top of the meter approximately 45 degrees or 0.8 rad from the vertical position with the bottom edge of the measuring bowl resting on the work surface. Using the hand on the flange to rotate the meter, vigorously roll the meter one quarter to one half turn forward and back several times, quickly starting and stopping the roll. Turn the measuring bowl about one third of a turn and repeat the rolling procedure. Continue the turning and rolling procedures for approximately one minute. The aggregate must be heard sliding in the meter during this process. If at any time during the inversion or rolling procedures, liquid is found to be leaking from the meter, the test is invalid and a new test shall be started. Set the unit upright and loosen the cap to allow any pressure to stabilize. Allow the meter to stand while the air rises to the top and until the liquid level stabilizes. The liquid level is considered stable when it does not change by more than 0.25% over a two minute period. However, if it takes more than six minutes for the liquid level to stabilize, or if there is more foam than that equivalent to two full percentage air content divisions on the meter scale over the liquid level, discard the trial and start a new test using more alcohol. That is, alcohol for the meter, not for yourself. If at this point we cannot see the liquid in the graduated neck, then the air content is greater than 9%. Therefore, we must add calibrated cups of water into the neck until the water level is within the graduated range. Be sure to count the amount of calibrated cups used, as we will need this information to determine the final air content. If the liquid level is stable without excessive foam, read the bottom of the meniscus to the nearest 0.25% and record this air content as the initial meter reading. Once the initial meter reading is obtained, retighten the cap and repeat the one minute rolling procedure. Once again, after the rolling procedure, stand the meter upright Loosen the cap and allow the liquid to stabilize. Here, the same rules apply. The liquid level is considered stable when it does not change by more than 0.25% over a two minute period. However, if it takes more than six minutes for the liquid level to stabilize, or if there is more foam than that equivalent to two full percent air content divisions on the meter scale over the liquid level, discard the trial and start a new test using more isopropyl alcohol. When the liquid level is stable, make a direct reading to the bottom of the meniscus and estimate to 0.25% air. If this reading has not changed more than 0.25% from the initial meter reading, record it as the final meter reading of the sample tested. But if the reading has changed from the initial meter reading by more than 0.25% air, record this reading as the new initial reading. Repeat the one minute rolling as previously described. Be sure to include all of the steps, including loosening the watertight cap and allowing the liquid level to stabilize. Now, read the indicated air content. If this reading has not changed by more than 0.25% air from the newest initial reading, record it as the final meter reading. If the reading has changed by more than 0.25%, discard the test and start a new test on a new sample of concrete using more alcohol. Disassemble the air meter by detaching the top section from the measuring bowl. Allow the liquid to discharge from the air meter. Dump the contents of the measuring bowl. Examine the interior of the measuring bowl to be sure that there are no portions of undisturbed, tightly packed concrete present. If portions of undisturbed concrete are found, the test is invalid. So, if there is no undisturbed material present in the bowl, Report the air content to the nearest 0.25% using the following equation. A equals A subscript R minus C plus W, 
where A is the air content of the sample tested in percent. A subscript R is the final meter reading in percent. C is the isopropyl alcohol correction factor. And W is any calibrated cups of water added during the procedure. Let's go ahead and do an example. Let's assume that our final meter reading was 8.25% and we used 5 pints, or 2.5 liters, of isopropyl alcohol. And we had to use 3 calibrated cups of water to bring the liquid level into the range of the graduated top section. What is the air content of this sample? So here, the A subscript R is 8.25%. The C is 0.75. This is coming from the isopropyl alcohol correction table. And finally, the W is 3. Again, the amount of calibrated cups of water used during the procedure. Gives us a final air content of the sample tested, A, of 10.5%. And this concludes ASTM C173, standard test method of air content for freshly mixed concrete using the volumetric method.